Joe Biden's victory in Georgia was historic, but it wasn't unplanned. It was a result of long-term efforts by voting advocates to take advantage of the shifting demographics due to an increase in minority-eligible voters. As I discuss in my book, The End of White Politics, How to Heal Our Liberal Divide, if Democrats manage to engage this base of prospective black and brown voters, they could challenge Republican strongholds just like Georgia. They successfully did that in November, leading Republicans to change their strategy and start spending millions of dollars in places like the city of Columbus, a hundred miles south of Atlanta. Columbus went to Biden during the general election, but the turnout was 10 points lower than the statewide average. Both parties believe engaging the voters who stayed home in November is the key to victory in January. Columbus is located in the Black Belt, a farming area that stretches through the southwest and central through southwest and central Georgia with a large black population. Stacey Abrams, co-founder of the New Georgia Project, has zeroed in on that part of the state and has been registering voters to increase election turnout. The group CEO, Ense Ufat, calls the Black Belt Georgia's new battleground, and she joins me now to discuss. Ense, expand on what you mean by that. Why is the focus on shifting from Atlanta uh, to surrounding counties, uh, and the, including the Black Belt, as you call it? Well, and well, first of all, hi, how is it Uh In order to win a statewide election, you have to contest uh, for votes across the state. Uh, and the truth of the matter is that while the metro Atlanta area represents half of the state's population, half of the state's electorate, it only represents half of the state's electorate. So in order to win statewide, in order to contest uh, for a statewide elections, you have to go outside of Metro Atlanta. So that includes Columbus, that includes Macon, that includes Valdosta and Savannah, and yes, what is known as Georgia's rural black belt. Um, and what we have seen is that there not only has been a lack of investment, but people are just not talking, not seeking those votes, not asking for those those votes, one, and then two, a long and rampant history of voter suppression. That those two things are were constantly at play. They have marked the results that we've seen in the past. Uh, and so addressing them can change uh, what is possible with elections in the future. In terms of how you engage those voters that are not in a city like Atlanta, is there a different strategy? Are you talking about different issues? Are those conversations with those voters different than the ones you would have with black voters who live in Atlanta, for example? Not really, because the way that we train our organizers, the way that we train our canvassers and our volunteers is that you have twice as many ears as you do mouths. And so we go into all of our direct voter contact uh, listening. Right. Ad adopting a sort of humble posture and talking about, you know, the act of voting and connecting the act of voting to the change that Georgians want to see. And that approach is consistent whether or not we're in the rural black belt or whether if that, that approach is consistent, whether or not we're in Atlanta or whether or not we're in the rural black belt. Absolutely. Republicans have spent $21 million in Columbus, nearly four times more than Democrats. Are you worried at all about the amount of money the GOP is pouring into uh, these parts of Georgia leading into this runoff election? Um, and could, could it lead to a Republican win in Democratic cities, uh, Democratic-leaning cities like Columbus? Right. Uh I'll say this, I'm not particularly worried, but it is excessive. Um, but we've never been able to compete on a dollar for dollar basis, uh, quite frankly, with conservative Republicans or with the enemies of progress. That it's been the, our people power that has always been able to push through, again, having high quality conversations about things that matter, our sort of relational organizing approach. Like that, that is how we've been able to achieve progressive victories. In, in, under incredibly oppressive conditions. And yeah, we've never had the amount of money. We um, have prepared for this, quite frankly. Uh, this will be the most expensive Senate races in the history of American politics. Um, and so we've known that before a single dollar was spent in the runoff. Wow, wow.
And say Georgia's Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, has lost, launched investigations into several groups. Obviously, as you know, he's been under attack uh, from the president. Uh, and, and you're included in, in this, the New Georgia Project, for allegedly seeking to register ineligible voters. I mean, it's the same it's the same playbook every time. What's your response to that investigation? And do you think it will hurt your efforts at all um, in your goal to boost the turnout? Uh, our name is the New Georgia Project. It is our aim to expand Georgia's electorate and to register young people and people of color. Every dollar that we raise, every dollar that we spend, all of our efforts are focused on that particular goal. And we're successful and we're winning and they're not happy about it. And so one of the ways that they get to express their frustration is because they're in power and they have investigative powers is to launch these nonsense, baseless, partisan investigations as attacks on us and our work. We will not be deterred. Uh, our work is righteous. Uh, and, you know, and it has borne out over and over and over again um, that they don't have any credibility. So they are not credible actors in this moment. Um, and this is a partisan attack. It's frustrating. It's annoying. It's designed to have a chilling effect on us and the work that we do. Um, and it won't. We're, we're registering voters every day. We'll continue to do so. 42% of registered voter, voters in Columbus are black. Um, so that seems like a right place to, to do your work um, because it's the highest of any media market in Georgia. Democrats overwhelmingly won the city's surrounding counties in the general election back in November. What do you think the GOP is seeing in the black belt that will make it more competitive in these runoff elections? Obviously, they are paying attention to these same parts of Georgia as you are. Right. Um, I think that what they're seeing is uh, an in increased enthusiasm. I think what they're seeing is um, increased uh, focus on them. Again, so it's it's digital ads, targeted digital ads that are culturally relevant. It's knocking on people's doors. Again, and having high quality face-to-face -face conversations. It's candidates having events. It's surrogates showing up to, you know, places where where people gather, where people congregate. It's mail and mm -hmm. postcards. Uh, it is it is a courting uh, for of the black belts' votes, um, and it is a proper right. and legitimate right. battleground. Absolutely, and say Ufat, thank you so much for joining me. We learned some new terms tonight: deep organizing, relational organizing. Get on those doors and talk to voters. That's democracy. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.